Alright guys, welcome back to the Mega Man X pl platformer Let's Dev, Let's Code, whatever you want to call it series. Last episode, we took care of one of the most advanced, complicated systems of aiming, where we can now have diagonal shots. Uh, the last episode, honestly, is completely optional, but, you know, who doesn't want to aim diagonal up and down sometimes? Now, so, off camera, I have worked on the stage just a little bit more. I would like to explore it, and in order to do that, though, we need to maybe create a camera system so we can slide our camera around side to side, or maybe have it locked along the our exposition of of our player here so can, the camera can move along with the player uh, so all i've got here uh, is just our player camera very distinctive uh blue which is basically our our tile sprite or our little wall sprite here but it's blue and the same thing for our camera modifier objects here which are yellow um it's a very simple or an easy fundamental idea where we just have one new uh script to add to our list and then of course we need to uh, add a collision effect where we collide with these uh, camera modifiers in order for the camera to update. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing I want to do though is make it so our view in the room, the, 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 the camera itself, aligns itself or it follows the camera object itself. So while this view is enabled, while the room starts, I'm going to set the uh, object following to of course the camera and all i've got for, for the camera for today's episode is just two objects called uh, ctr underscore camera and then ctr underscore camera mod uh the camera mod is what's going to help us update our camera and of course their cameras self-explanatory it's going to be our view in the room so our h border is going to be half of the width of our view so it's going to be 160 and then our height is going to be 110. Our horizontal speed is going to be set to 4, and we can leave our vertical speed of the view uh, just to be ne negative 1, so, so it's locked on. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Um, in our scripts, in the stage group, I'm going to go ahead and create a new script, and I'm going to call this Update Camera. So in, the, in this in this script here, we're going to have just uh, four arguments to work with here. And there will be our lock x, lock y, which these can either be true or false, our x chord and our y chord. Um, all these variables are actually going to be global uh, or local global variables or global vars, and we'll be able to adjust them throughout the game uh, itself. Um, so yeah. And real quick, we need to go define those variables in our execute room. So this is where this room comes in handy. In our creation code, we're just going to make a comment saying it's, it's establish camera variables. And these are going to be global var. So global var uh, lock x, lock y, x chord, or let's see, x chord, and then y chord. And then we're just going to leave it at that. So they're already defined, good to go. Um, so here we go. So it's a really simple script, and it's all, all the uh, functions kind of behave the same. But we're going to start with uh, seeing if we want to uh, lock our x coordinate. So when we when I say lock the x coordinate, if we set this argument to be true in the future, what it will do is it will make the camera align with the same X position as our player, so we can so the camera can shift left and right depending on where our player is moving to. Similarly for the Y coordinate when we're falling or jumping, for instance. So we're going to say update X axis lock, and here we go. So if our argument 0 is equal to true, so we want to lock the X axis, we're going to set lock x, our global variable, to true, and our y chord to be uh, argument free, which is this argument right here. Um, a quick note is, w actually, no, I'll get to that later, but let's just, let's just keep going. Um, so, argument, here we go. So, else we'll set lock x to be equal to false. And then it's, sim it's basically the same thing for the y-axis, so we can literally copy this and paste this in, and then uh, just change lock x to lock y, and then y chord to x chord. Uh, make sure we set argument 3 to argument 2, and argument 0 to argument 1, and then lock y instead will be false. 
And then last but not least, we need to set unlocked x, y coordinates. So then if we're not argument zero, so if that is false, and our, we're not locking the y-axis, so argument one is false, uh, all we're just going to do is to say x chord is equal to argument two, and y chord equal to argument three. And that's the script done. It's, it's simple as that. So now we need to go to our camera here and uh, make a step event here. And we're going to drop in some code, and here and it's just going to be very simple again. Uh, this is just going to be our location controller, where the cam basically where the camera sits in the room. So we're going to make a local variable called var pl, or uh, for player, and this is going to be our uh, x space player. So we don't have to keep saying control x space multiple times. So if this instance exists, so if it's in the room, um, we're basically whoop, we're basically going to say um, if lock x. So if, if we have the x-axis locked, we're going to set our x-coordinate to be our pl.x, which is basically the same x-value as where our player is, so it will lock onto the player. Um, else, we'll have x be equal to our x-coordinate. And then similarly for the y, we'll just say if lock y, uh, y will be equal to pl.y, and then else y equal to y chord, and that's it. In our create event, we need to also define some variables here too. Well, actually, no, we don't, because in my reference code, we I've already defined the camera, the global variables right here. But you know, if if they're already defined in our execute room, it should work the same way. But what we should do when we create is just set our x chord to e equal to x start and our y chord to be equal to y start. And these two variables here are like the starting x and y positions of when they're first created in the room, or where they first appear in the room, for example. And then there's one more thing we need to do. It's just one line of code in our back in our player type here, or our, our player controller here. We need to create a new event for when we collide with one of the um, camera modifiers. So in here, uh, I'm just going to say update the player camera, and all it is is just saying update camera, our can x, can y, new x, and new y. Now why did I not say lock x, lock y, x chord, y chord in these arguments? Um, for each of these uh, camera modifiers, we need to define uh, we need to define these variables in the object's creation code here so we can have different coordinates depending on which camera modifier we run into. So, that being said, uh, the first thing we need to do is just figure out what these two, what this coordinate is here. And if you can see down there towards the bottom of my screen, our x coordinate is 144 and our y coordinate is 180. So, if I go into the creation code of this uh, camera modifier on the left, Here's what we're going to do. We're going to say can x is equal to false, which means we cannot lock the x axis. Similarly, we cannot lock the y axis when we set can y to false. Our new x will be uh, 144, and our new y will be 60, if that is what I said. Let's see, 144 by 80. Whoops, okay, that's all right. So 144 by 80, and that one is done. However, for this one here, um, what we're going to do is go into this creation code, and we're going to lock the x-axis with this one. So can x will be set to true, our can y will be set to false, our new x will just be equal to x, we just need to create this variable so we don't get any errors, uh, and our new y uh, will just set to uh, 80 as well, I guess. And that's it. That's all we need to do. And for any other uh, camera modifiers, what I suggest you do at the end of, the, of, of, of a segment in the room, you place the same camera modifier with the same uh, variables, or with, with the same um, arguments or variable inputs. And then w for the next segment, that's where you put in your new set of uh, conditions here. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so now, 
if I run the game, we should see as we spawn in, lock X is not set before reading it, unfortunately. So then I think that was a good reason why our um, global bars were in our camera. So what we'll do then, my apologies on that, I, that I lied, but <laughs> so we'll just say lock X is equal to false, lock Y is equal to false, and then try running the game again. Okay, so now we can run the game, and as you can see, as I run along, of course, we we have uh, we that's just where our camera sits. If I collide this, uh oh, new Y was not set before reading it, and I think I know why, because we didn't set the right application. So right now, it's it's saying it applies to our sub, the player. So that means it needs to update the camera depending on any variables we have in the player. What we need to do is we need to set the application to the other object index, and then this should work. So now if I run the game, let's try this again. Right along, and there we go. So now we can move along and explore the room. And if I come back to this segment, you can see that it refixes itself out to our starting point here. So now let's go ahead and explore the room. Just a simple room here, and oh, what do we have here? I, it's a gap I can't seem to fit under, which might hint that we'll be working on something new. So, unfortunately, as a bombshell, this is where this episode's going to end, because it was just a very simple episode. I wanted to kind of just get it out there, because it's, it's going to help us with our creations of our stages. And the next episode, we'll be working on some crouching. And then after that, dash mechanics. So other than that, I have been Nighthawk, and I will see you guys later.